Well, Coach Blum, now if you guys aren't from Texas, um, or if you are from Texas, then you know about uh, Katie High School and the pride and the tradition and dominance that, that is associated with that program. Uh, they have nine state championships. Uh, it's, it's one of the premier programs, not only in the state of Texas, but in the entire nation as well. Tigers won their ninth title this past season uh, in, a, in a convincing fashion over Cedar Hill to wrap up a 13-1 season. Uh, 2020 season was Coach Blum's first at Katy after spending two seasons as a defensive line coach at the University of Houston. Uh, while at Houston, Coach Blum tutored junior defensive tackle Ed Oliver, who in 2018 became Houston's first three-time All-American and the university's first player to earn first-team All-Conference three times. Uh, prior to his time at U of H, Coach Blum served as the assistant head coach, defense coordinator, and defensive line coach at Spring Westfield High School, where he coached from 2009 to 2016. We also coached and developed Ed Oliver, you know, a five-star recruit, Under Armour All-American, and the number one defensive tackle in the state of Texas as a senior. Uh, coach Blum has also spent time as a, as a coach at Klein Forest High School and Livingston High School. Uh, he's from Bryan, Ohio, attended Ashland University, where he's a four-year starter at Nose Guard, three-year captain, and three-time all-conference selection. He also played three years in the Arena Football League with Augusta, Orlando, and Carolina. And today, Coach Blum is talking about defensive line techniques and drills. So, Coach Blum, thanks again for being a part of this, and I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, hold on. I got to interrupt real quick. So, you, you – I didn't know you went to Ashland. I, I played and then GA at Ashland. That's I know. I know. That was one of the uh, – uh, that was one of the things that when I when, – when you contacted me, that was the first thing I did. I looked you up. I said, oh, we're fellow Eagles. No oh, shit. Anyway, that's awesome. We'll talk about it a little bit. I'm sure it was a little bit yeah. from when you were there as opposed to when I was. So. The, the clip from Step Brothers. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> that, that, that's that's popping up in my mind. All right. Sorry. All right, I'm back. I'll go ahead and take it, Coach. <laughs> Good deal. Um, you know, first of all, Ty, Pat, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, you know, just to kind of look at the madness that we've gone through in the past, you know, a year and a half with, the, you know, the pandemic and everything. And then seeing the, you know, the, the keep your pads down podcast, which was started before the pandemic, but it seems like I know I'm guilty of really jumping into a lot of the, you know, electronic internet stuff, you know, once we started getting our hands tied with being able to, you know, visit people. So, to go on and now see the art coaching network that Pat's created. And it's just amazing. You talk about resources for coaches and, um, you know, guys always want to get better. Um, you know, so one thing I talked about with Ty when I did his podcast was, you know, it, you know, I always look, look at it. Like if you ain't, if you ain't learning, you ain't living, you know, and at the end of the day, um, you know, the one thing that I've learned, you know, getting ready to start my, you know, 19th year, you know, in June is you're, you can learn something from everybody. And, you know, one thing guys don't realize is you may not agree with something that somebody else does, but what you're doing is teaching yourself, you know, okay, that's a different style. That's a different technique. I don't have to agree with it, but again, you know, everybody has different aspects. Everybody has different ways to quote unquote, you know, skin a cat. So, um, to see different options, to see the, uh, you know, the network of, of coaches and, and, you know, just the, the online presence and to see, hey, I can go watch a special teams clinic today and then, you know, watch a, a, a safeties clinic tomorrow, you know, on our coaching network. It's just amazing. It's an awesome opportunity to be a part of. Um, you know, I'm really excited about it. Uh, you know, starting off with this, uh, you know, title slide, I got to, you know, first give thanks obviously to my, my family, my wife and my daughter, they're a, they're a football family. You know, they travel around, they know they're going to support, you know, anyone that, that daddy coaches and, and they're going to be all in in regards to that. So, you know, um, to see what they deal with on a daily basis, you know, to hear that my wife is changing faucets and doing stuff like that when, you know, I'm out, you know, working and it's just crazy to, to see, you know, how people work in regards to when you're supported. Um, you know, so I, I had to start off with thanking them. Obviously, you know, thanking Coach Joseph for giving me the opportunity to be at Katie. Um, you know, I joke with him um, because it, it really was the third opportunity where I reached out to him. 
uh, in my coaching career to try to to try to become a Katie Tiger. Um, you know, it's just one of those deals where, you know, when 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 you get when you get into this program, you know, there there's there's ways things are done, and 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 changing really doesn't occur very often. So, you know, I, I look at it like just the, uh, you know, Willy Wonka golden ticket to, to have the opportunity, you know, to, to learn um, every day. Uh, you know, the, the last thing that I wanna really bring out or emphasize on this <clears throat> title slide is the kids in that corner. Um, you know, it's crazy because people ask about Katie and what's the difference, what's the difference, this and that. Um, well, when you look at the picture, uh, the kid on crutches is is is, is my five-star Under Armour All-American that got hurt uh, the Wednesday before our third-round playoff game against the defending state champion, you know, Shadow Creek. And, uh, you know, normally you'd think, oh, God, you know, what are we going to do? And uh, this young man right here, who was a, a junior, um, only started, you know, zero games before that came in and started in the third round playoff game against the defending state champion and, and did an amazing job, you know, and I kind of, I kind of lean on those two examples. And then I go back to this guy right here. It's hard to see the guy in between me and this player that right there is our starting nose guard at Katy, Texas, five foot 10, 225 pounds and just explosive, unselfish. And, you know, when we look at a stand, when we look at it from a standpoint of what success is defined as at Katy High School, it's all about doing your best. And then at the end of the day, being unselfish, you know, we're, we are going to be selfless and understand the scheme and know that we may not be the guy that makes the play. We might be the guy that takes the double team so that Mike linebacker is unblocked. Or we might got, you know, we might be the guy that eats up, you know, the spiller or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think the one thing that stands out with that is just the basic, you know, being selfless and and our kids understand their their responsibility. And okay, if I'm gonna do my job, then then I know my my partner in crime is gonna take care of his business, especially if I cut the field back to him or something else like that. So I wanted to say all that before I got started. Um, you know, I'm going to throw a flag out there. I don't, I don't have game film on this, on this little presentation. Um, you know, it's all practice video and it, it's multiple reps. Um, the one thing that I wanted to show was, you know, the goods and the bads of drills in regards to examples and everything else. <clears throat> so without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, starting off with our progression, you know, my progression of teaching, this started for me in uh, 2004, um, basically when I got down here, uh, a gentleman by the name of Randy Perry, he's a retired defensive coordinator at Klein Forest High School, uh, he talked about soccer. And basically when you talk about your stance, your alignment, your key and your assignment, that's in a nutshell what you have to focus on um, as a football player, you know? And then depending on the details and how detailed you wanna get, that's where your development of drills come into play, you know? And when I look at it from a standpoint of, okay, what kind of stance drills do I have? I'm gonna have my list. And, you know, this is a drill list that I created, um, you know, going back at the beginning of the season this year, um, knowing that, you know, we were more of a three down team um, than a four down team and, and understanding that there are, different variations to every drill you know every day guys talk about this drill and that drill but at the end of the day what's the focus you know what is the focus let's keep the main thing the main thing let's not you know major in the minor so you know I think it's imperative for every coach to have some type of tool belt to refer back to you know in regards to a drill list you know I have this thing hanging on my my cabinet and when I hit that drill, I'm going to highlight it. And if there's a variation of the drill, I'm going to update it. And I'm going to, you know, document it and make sure I have it because, um, you know, things not documented are soon forgotten. 
And, you know, even if you don't use it for the rest of the year, it's something you can refer back to. There's drills on here that, you know, I used at Houston three years ago that, that I may not have used this past season. But it all could be dependent on the, on the, on the children or the, the young men that you coach. Um, so, you know, I think it's very important that you have something to, re to reference back to all the time so you can say, what, what do I need to fix? What's the major focus this week? And how do we need to get it done in order to be successful? All right, first drill starting off. So uh, we talked about the progression of teaching and we talked about stance assignment, um, stance alignment, key assignment. You know, the first drill is stance holds. It's very, 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 you know, um, elementary in regards to, you know, how you line up your requirements. But then, like I said, as you know, it depends on the personality of the coach in regards to how detailed you want to get. Um, you know, just a little bit um, in regards to this drill in itself, a few of the drills that I'll go over are great drills early to do, especially when you're at the high school level when you can't use your equipment or even at the collegiate le uh, level where you get that, you know, that half hour, that extra hour after your um, summer workout. You know, these are the types of drills where you don't have to rely on equipment, um, but you can really, really focus on the fundamentals. So when we talk about stance holds, you know, I'm just going to kind of run through what the teaching points are, and then I'm going to show the video. So obviously we know we're working on three-point stance. It's a talk walk. Okay, so there's going to be some talking going on. Um, so, that, you know, you got to make sure your kids are lined up and they're, and they're in a situation where you can, they can hear you and they can be evaluated. We're going to call out the shade just like a linebacker would do. You know, we're going to fix our feet. We're going to roll our elbows. We're going to put our elbows on our thighs. We're going to roll it forward. These are all the, 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 the pre-snap coaching points that we're going to talk about. You know, and then when we talk about actually getting into the deal, then we're going to look at when they're in their stance, you know, what kind of things do we want to really nitpick at? You know, is the forward lean? you know, uh, is the weight on the fingers. Um, you don't want your back arched. Uh, you know, is the staggered foot? Are you toe to heel? You know, what's your stagger like? Um, you know, I always talk about a pitcher of water test. And what that is, is if you're in your stance and I walk by and pour that pitcher of water on your back, is it going to run forward off your shoulders? Or is it just going to sit on your back and run off the sides? You know, I think that determine that that'll give kids an idea of, you know, just how much weight should be on their hand um, in regards to that. You know, I think the more you can relate things to real life situations like pouring a pitcher of water on a kid's back, you know, the more kids can relate to what you're saying. Um, so, you know, this is the title in regards to uh, the teaching points. And now we'll go to the video. Um, looking at the video, this is uh, some video from when I was at uh, Westfield High School uh, in my first tour. Um, and this is our stance holds. Um, it's funny, you look at some of the kids that are on here, you know, some of your Texas Longhorn fans. This is a young Keandre Coburn, who was an Under Armour All-American for me, uh, starting nose guard at Texas. Um, so it's funny. It's fun to see kids. It's fun to revert back and see where kids trained, how they trained. Um, but again, going through the teaching. So normally you'll hear the video and I don't want to have the sound on because I'd like to talk through it. But right now, you know, we're in a situation where I call the shade. So your first command is fix your feet. Those kids are fixing their feet right now. Everyone's aligned. We ran a four down at Westfield. So we're going to line up in a four down here. It doesn't matter. You know, you can go five across. We're going six across right now, Katie when we get a chance to get on the grass. So it doesn't matter. It's all about being able to see every kid and letting those kids be able to see each other. You know, sometimes you always get your good kids in the front or you usually get your good kids in the front and it kind of goes back in a pecking order. So you get those younger kids to be able to mirror and see what the, the, the better kids get to do. I like to change it up sometimes and get everybody lined up and say, okay, flip it around. So now you got the young kids being the leaders up front. And it puts a little more onus of responsibility on them. Um, so, again, when we talk about this drill, you know, the first command is fix your feet. So the kids fix their feet. Obviously, we got a guy shaded right now on here. We're going to work a coverage step rule. 
which means it, this is a four down single gap spill to speed scheme. So we are going to put our covered foot back and we're going to put our covered hand down. The covered foot, covered man rule should be very uh, self-explanatory. And I say should, I stress the word should, okay? Because, you know, you very, very often you get guys that don't have their feet or their hands correct. And that's, you know, one of the things that hopefully, you know, using the, the one thing I've seen with this drill is you kind of eliminate those mistakes once you start, you know, getting into your couple of weeks beyond, you know, your first couple of uh, uh, installs and, and you're not really correct in the, the fundamental foundation uh, techniques. So, you know, we start with a fix your feet command and then we're going to roll our elbows to, or we're going to put our elbows on our thighs. Everybody's going to put their elbows on their thighs. And when they put their elbows on their thighs, they're going to check some things. They're going to make sure that their feet are shoulder width. They're going to make sure that their toes are folded. They're going to make sure their knees are aligned. Okay. Because again, when a guy gets in a stance, if it's not right here, when he rolls that hand forward and he puts that hand on the ground, it's not going to be right. It's like learning math or algebra. You got to learn the fundamentals before you go on to trigonometry and everything else. So we go, you know, again, we'll fix our feet. We'll put our elbows to our thighs and then we will roll it forward. And when I say roll it forward, I want them to actually roll it forward. And I want them to, to get an idea. You're not just dropping your hand down like an offensive lineman would when he's getting set in his stance. You're going to move forward. You're going to roll forward and have, you know, good weight on the hand. You know, everyone's a numbers. You know, the game of football has become so technical. Okay, just to answer the question, it's probably 70%. Well, you want 70% of your weight on that hand. If we walk by and knock your hand out, you should fall forward. Okay. Um, you know, in my opinion, um, when you're working this, this kind of backs up the philosophy of an attacking defensive line. Um, you know, you're ready to slam that foot in the ground. You're ready to attack forward. Um, this also promotes vertical steps. Um, you know, when you run a vertical scheme and you run an attacking defensive line, you want vertical steps, especially on movements, you know, lateral steps on slants create vertical seams for the offense. Uh, and that's a no, no um, for us, you know, so you can see um, there's a bunch of different ways people do it. But again, this is some of the things that we talk about. So we got, we've got our, we've got our stance, we've roll it forward. Okay. And then the next variation we're going to do is we're going to pick that back foot up in our stance, okay? And there's a few reasons we're going to pick that back foot up. You know, the first reason is, is uh, you know, body control and weight balance, okay? If you're in a good balanced stance, you should be able to pick the back foot up and still have a great base like this gentleman right here, okay? And we're not asking you to pick the back foot up like a donkey and kick it up to the sky. Just just kind of pick the back foot up. You're going to see the kids wobble. The first couple of times you're going to see it, you'll see them move to a four point and then they start moving their hand and they start really understanding where their body weight is, okay? The second aspect of picking the back foot up is it somewhat tells the kid, okay, how short that first step has to be. When we do this drill and we don't pick the back foot up and we go right into a set hit and a slam chop chop, um, you're going to see a big first step. Okay. The one thing that you can't do when you pick the back foot up and you come out of your stance on a set hit is you can't take a big first step. So what we'll do is we'll actually put that foot in the air. Okay. We'll put that foot in the air and then I'll give them a set hit. And they've got to slam that first step from being in the air into the ground and then chop, chop out of it. Okay. So that's one thing, you know, if we start working and I start seeing too big of first steps, we're going straight to picking up that back foot. So those kids instantly get an understanding of slamming it. Okay. And then chopping out of it. All right. Now it, it, it's not going to be pretty. Okay. But again, the details are in the drills. What are you looking for? What's the emphasis, okay? When we transition into picking up that back foot, I wanna see a slam chop chop. 
Okay. And then the last aspect aspect of our stance hold is we are actually, I'm going to be standing there because what you see on this video is me with a GoPro. This is my GoPro angle. Okay. So whatever the kids, whatever I see, the kids see this, this quickly eliminated coach. I did that. Okay. No, you didn't. Okay. The, Cause I see it. All right. So when we, when we eliminate those excuses, we eliminate those opportunities for excuses. Um, you know, I think it, it, it's a great teaching tool. And, and at the end of the day, let's face it, who doesn't want to be on video? You know, especially if you're a high school kid, you know, kid, the video, you know, we live in a society where everyone loves to see themselves. So let's video it. All right. We all, we're, we're in Indy. Let's video it. Let's, let's, let's really break down what we got going on. Okay. So we slam that foot. Okay. And we work on slamming that foot. And then the last aspect is we're going to point, I'm going to give you a direction and I just want to see you turn that toe. I want to see if you can slam chop chop and turn that toe. Yes. You're going to feel awkward. Yes. It is not going to feel right. Okay. But it is going to segue into the next drill. Okay. Everything is a process. Everything is a foundation. So again, you know, when we work stance holds, we're going multiple reps. We fixing our feet. We're putting our elbows to our thighs. We're rolling it forward. Okay. You know, you can start looking at emphasis of where the hand is aligned with the back foot. Okay. There's so many details that you can look at and focus on as a, as a, as a coach that, you know, the biggest thing is you just got to make sure that those kids understand what it is we're trying to get done. Okay. You know, there's a lot of times I, you know, I've seen drills where, you know, you do a takeoff drill or, you know, run read drill and, and guys are shooting their hands and they're doing all kinds of stuff. Well, that, that's great and all, but you know, where have you progressed from? Have you taught every, you know, little skill that you're expecting those kids to know or are you, you know, not keeping the main thing, the main thing, you know, if we're doing a takeoff drill, I'm working on takeoff, getting off the ball, and redirect. I'm really not trying to emphasize anything about hands because a 15 to, you know, 18 year old kid can only think about one or two things at a time anyway. So what are we talking about? Okay. So when we work this drill, we'll work both shades. Um, this is a good segue. Like I said, it's a good non-contact, good non, non-equipment drill. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's good to see, you know, who can get in their stance. And this is a, this is one of those drills that you got to earn your way out of, you know, once stance holds are good, then we will progress and we won't do the drill anymore, but we're going to start off with that drill. Okay. We're going to start off with that drill and every day we do it, we're going to continue to do it until the, the, the mass, the, the majority of the group gets good at it. Then we'll get, hey, guys, no more stance holds. And they're happy, okay, because that's just like, you know, that's a leg burner. They always know that's, that's the leg burner drill, okay? Moving on, okay, moving on to uh, the next drill um, is our slam step. And I uh, talked about it with Ty on our podcast, and basically that's our slam chop chop drill. And, uh, you know, before I – um, renamed it Slam Chop Chop. Um, it was funny because I used to call it Triple B's. And what we said was it was baby boom, boom. You're going to take a baby step and then a boom, boom step. All right. And then I think, you know, I got too big for my britches. And, you know, when I made the, the move to University of Houston, I guess I had to call it something a little more professional. So I called it Slam Chop Chop. Um, so going from that, you know, basically all it is, is, you know, you're taking that first slam step and then you're getting your feet moving. Um, this, when I talk about this drill, I, I like to make sure those D line know that, Hey guys, all you are is a linebacker with your hand out. Okay. So how fast and how much ground can you gain getting out of your stance and getting off the block before you become a linebacker? OK, and, and, you know, you know and, and for some kids, I think it's relative, but for, for others, you know, whatever it is, whatever that carrot is that makes those kids, you know, do what they got to do for you. Um, when we talk about the slam step, you know, obviously we already 
worked our stance hold. So the stance started it, okay? And we are working this slam, slam step um, coming out of our stance. So what you've just seen is two drills, or you, you're about to see the second drill, but we've talked about a whole bunch of teaching points. We've talked about a whole bunch of focal points. And, and I think what you really have to emphasize is as a coach, you've got to figure out what, what your players are deficient in and what do I have to major in in regards to fix those weaknesses, okay? And, and there's so many things that you can look at and so many things that you can focus on in a drill that sometimes it becomes um, paralysis through analysis. You know, when you're doing too much, when you're saying too much, when you're talking to a kid about 18 different things, that kid isn't thinking about anything in regards to what you want them to think about. So when we talk about our slam steps, you know, we're going to, we're going to uh, keep it simple. You know, we talked about the slam step, um, you know, it should start as a stance hold and then we're going to progress to our three steps. So, you know, if you can imagine the first video clip you saw, we'll start off by just getting in a stance and then they'll stand up, they'll shake their legs out and they'll get in their stance again. And then we will evolve to the slam step. And then once we do the slam step, then we'll evolve to doing the stance hold, the slam step, and then giving them a direction. And then once we do all of that, then we'll get, then we'll get busy on the takeoffs, okay, on actually ball get off and everything else. So when we look at this drill, we're talking about, um, you know, starting as a stance, you know, hips, the hips shouldn't roll forward. Um, this will raise the D-line. You need to stay low, okay? Defensive lineman should take his first step, which is a slam. He's followed by a second and third, chop, chop, okay? And again, you know, what are our teaching points? What are we looking for? I know when we work this drill on turf, if you're doing it right, you're going to have a lot of bunch of black pellets in the area of where those kids are really moving their feet. Um, if we're doing it on grass, then I'm going to tell those kids, you know, let's we got to kill some grass. You know, it was when, when Corby Meekins was our head coach at Westfield High School, you know, now he's at the University of Houston. It was a day, you know, almost weekly thing where, you know, I'd probably get my butt chewed about not moving the drill around because, you know, you, you kill grass and, you know, you want to make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to look. So, you know, that teaching point for coaches, you know, if you're going to do this drill on grass, make sure you move around. Your head coach is probably going to let you know about it. Um, so when we look at this drill, we're going to go into it. Here's some clip um, from the University of Houston. We're actually doing this in a shoot, okay? You know, there's a few things that our kids, that the kids that I coach, they know about this drill. First off, it's a competition drill. Everything we do in regards to drills, we want to develop competition. We want you to mirror the best guy that does it and try to be like him and try to be better than him. So if we're working this takeoff drill, these two guys that are in this shoot right now, they know ball keys paramount, okay? But they also know that once they get a direction, let's say they, they get off the ball and go to the left, okay? Ed knows that when he redirects to the left, his butt has got to get out of there because he doesn't want to get caught by Gerard. And at the same time, Gerard is thinking that if I get a direction to the left, to our left, I got to catch Ed. OK, and it's not about running people over, you know, it, just a little tap on the back. Like, hey, man, I got you. You know, I, I got you. Don't you know, you touch me. And that's how you create the competition. Now, you know, from an evolution of this drill, we will start this drill without the cage and we will do it with two guys and then we'll actually evolve to having four guys. So we'll put our bigs on the inside if we have them, if we're looking at a four down or if we have a bunch of guys. You know, we'll work two guys on the inside and two guys on the outside. And, and the great thing is when, when, when guys start really getting sharp about it, they have that competitive nature of, I'm going to run somebody over, just like you would on the football field. You know, you can't really say a whole lot when a kid guesses the direction. You know, if, if one guy goes one way and the other guy goes the way he's supposed to, he might get run over. All right. Just like when you're in a game. If you're not running to the ball and your teammate is trying to run to the ball, 
you might get run over. And, and I think that's one of the things that kind of gets lost in translation from a competition standpoint is, you know, it's eat or be eaten when, when there's 11 guys on the field. So when we look at this drill, okay, we're going to look at the slam step. And all we're working right now is the slam chop chop out of the drill. We are working on getting into what I call that chop zone, which is right through here. You're talking about the six inches beyond the line of scrimmage, okay? We want to get in this area, okay? We want to get in this area. That's our chop zone, all right? And we always talk about getting in the chop zone because that's where we want to do the work, all right? So when we get in the chop zone, we know we're, we're grinding. We're, we're in the heel line of the offensive line, and we know we're exactly where we want to be. When we do this drill without a cage, what I'll have the kids do is I'll have them once they do their rep, they will stop and they will look down at the, at the ground, okay? If they're behind the line, they know they're not gaining ground. If they're way up here, they know their steps are too big, okay? So what you start doing is you start creating an onus of responsibility with the kids so they become their own little coaches because that's really what you want. You know, you want your guys saying, hey, man, get your foot down or, you know, this or that. You, you want that. OK, you want mental reps. You want those kids watching so they know and they can learn from each other. All right. So when we're working this slam chop chop, that's all it is. OK, keep the main thing, the main thing. How fast can you slam that back foot and how fast can you come out of that stance? All right. This is all this is ball get off and this is getting into the chop zone. So when we look at this rep, you know, starting off with the first rep, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. You know, we're going to take that slam step. That slam step is going to be right about where that line of scrimmage is. And then we're going to chop it out of there. Okay. Now, are we ever going to take 5,000 steps? No. Okay. But what you have to create is muscle memory with your kids. So they understand that when you're in a bad position, your feet have to move. Okay. If you stop your feet, you're going to get beat. Okay. And I think that's one thing. That, I, that this drill really emphasizes is, is foot fire. You know, how fast can we keep our feet moving and be under control? You know, so when you look at different guys and you look at the reps, um, you can start really identifying the focus on the details. You know, the, the, biggest, the biggest problem, the biggest issue that I think that I got with this drill when we worked under a cage was from a teaching standpoint, guys weren't looking through their eyebrows enough. And what you, what you end up seeing when guys don't bow their neck and look through their eyebrows is they kind of waddle out with a flat back, you know, and I think there's a really good example by the young man on our right and our left, um, you know, of just learning how to bend, you know, trying to look through, forcing your chin up, forcing yourself to look through your eyebrows. All right. I think that's something that uh, is neglected when we talk about, you know, ball, ball key and how guys have to really see it. So when we're looking at these different reps, you know, you can pick out who's got too big of a first step. You know, when we're looking at this, basically where this, where, where these guys are lined up right now, we don't, we want that first step to be no, basically no further than probably that line of scrimmage. You know, if we're really thinking about stopping the run, okay. Now we talk about mentalities. Okay, when we do run read on, on takeoffs, this is what we're doing. But when we do pass read, it's big ball get off. You're taking that step, you're driving that knee vertical, and you are no longer slam chop chop. Okay, so I want to make sure that that is known. You know, this is not our initial, hey, this is how we get off the ball all the time. But in order to rush the passer, most of the time you have to stop the run. And that's kind of why. Um, you know, we start with the slam, chop, chop. Footwork is always key. You know, the one thing that really is disheartening to me is when you see guys that don't move their feet, they stop their feet, they try to base themselves, their legs get locked, and all of a sudden an ACL gets blown. You know, when those feet stay in the ground, probably a situation where an injury can occur. Now, one of the other emphasis um, in this drill, as you can see, I'm off to the side. We were working, you know, everything, 
everything that we worked, uh, you know, the however many years I was with this young man, it was always about keying the ball. You know, it, Ed had a great knack for, uh, you know, when when the ball was going to get snapped and everything else. But he, you know, just like all D linemen, you know, guys are guilty. You know, they try to anticipate ball get off and they're going, you know, get off sides. Um, you know, I think there's a double edged sword when you when you teach and and you preach attack, attack, attack. You know, you have got to be prepared to combat. You know, the offsides penalties. You've got it's human nature. And I just think, you know, um, you know, through uh, I say punishment, but, you know, you're going to you're going to address it after practice and you're going to continue to, you know, stay on with ball key. And, and that's what we're going to focus on. So they're getting barked at with a cadence, you know, and then we're focusing on our slams and our chop chops. OK, all right. I don't want to get too caught up on a one drill. So the next drill we're going to look at is our hip hand slam with our wall punch. Okay. Um, the one thing that I've learned uh, in this profession as a defensive line coach is, you know, there's two philosophies, you know, there's, are you a hips guy or are you a step first guy? And, you know, I think, I think if you commit to one philosophy, you're kind of painting yourself into a corner. I think um, to try to create the best of both worlds, um, you're going to get the best player. You know, I, I tell my my guys all the time, it, it, if, if we're not moving our feet, we're not putting ourselves in a position to, to punch a down block or to, you know, to stay on path to spill. You know, it, it's really hard to tell a 15-year-old just to throw hands and hips and, and feet follow when he's got to punch a down block and spill because, you know, nine times out of ten, he's going to throw hands and hips and he's just going to go forward. OK, so when we progress to this, now we're looking at the other side of the philosophy. We've looked at some of the steps, the footwork. Now we're going to look at the hips and hands. OK, when we work this drill, all I want to do is see them in a shade on the crack. OK, we can get as detailed as their hands, where their hands should be. Those two dots should be where their hands should be split in the crack. We want our thumbs at two and ten, which is going to ensure our elbows are going to stay inside. OK. And what we want to do in this drill is we want to really roll those hips and shoot those hands. So what you're going to see is there is no step here. OK, so we're going to start this drill off by just activating the hands and the hips. OK, so the first couple sets, we're going to see hands and hips. That's all it is. Hands and hips. Do the hands, the knees, the hips, does everything that's aligned go forward? OK. And then when we start seeing different examples, then we start seeing what sticks out. So now we saw one guy and everything looked pretty aligned. And now we go to the next guy. Well, what's his first emphasis? His first emphasis right here is those knees go wide. Okay, he's trying to come out of his hips, but those knees go wide. So what we wanna do is, is think more about shooting belly buttons instead of kneecaps. Okay, and, that, and that's one thing, you know, that was a discrepancy that he had. Um, but again, dynamic football player. So again, you see different examples of where the thumbs are. How are we coming out of our hips? Um, you know, and you see good examples. You see bad examples. You see good details in regards to different coaching points. And, and again, I, I think the big emphasis is, you know, you keep the main thing the main thing. If we're working on activating our hips, and shooting hands, then let's just focus on that. Let's just focus on activating our hands, ball key, you know, shooting those hands, keying, rolling the hips forward. You know, this guy does a great job of leading with his hips and the hands follow. Um, as you can see, you know, he's he squeezing the butt. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of teaching points. We want to squeeze the booty and we want to roll the hips. We want to keep those thumbs pointing. Okay. So then, you know, again, you, you see different guys, you see what their deficiencies are in, in just basic fundamental drills. OK, so then the next progression of this drill is now we're going to work the step with. It. Now we're going to work the slam step with. It, OK, and, and it's almost like guys are getting off the rock as hard as they can and then just hitting a wall. And, and you almost want them to get that feeling of what it's like to punch somebody with that 
foot going forward. Okay, so again, you saw my guy that this is the same guy that in the drill before his knees were bowing out when he was just rolling hips. Okay, so he was focusing on trying to roll his hips, but his knees were coming out. He wasn't thinking about rolling, you know, belly button forward. Okay, all of a sudden we talk about slamming that step with it and those knees going out goes away. You know, so you you start to really see the deficiencies and what I got to work on um, with each individual, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's an individualized education plan, you know, for you teachers, um, you know, everyone's different and every kid, you know, matures at his own pace. Um, you know, the one thing I failed to mention about that cover photo with, with the, the, the defensive line was, you know, I had my, the, the, the five-star, uh, you know, recruit, you know, he was out for the, for the state championship and my starting, the other starting defensive end, you know, he was a JV football player last year and he was the MVP of the state championship. He was also the defensive MVP of the greater Houston area. And he was a JV football player last year. So, Again, kids develop at their own pace. You know, the JV is not, uh, it's not a bad thing. Um, but again, you want to keep those guys aligned. You want to make sure that the details in the drill are the focus on what they got to work on, you know, when we're not together, when they're coming up and they're working on their own. You know, so when we work this hand, you know, everything is based on a progression. Um, you know, and then, like I said, these are just examples of different guys. You know, this is Peyton Turner, who's, you know, a, a, a big pro prospect this year. I had the pleasure of recruiting him. Nobody recruited him. He was a division one basketball player and he, and he's now projected, you know, a first three round football player. So you get those good, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to see what, you know, what you can do. Uh, next drill is the progression. Again, we're building on it. And, and I apologize if, if this is some elementary stuff, but, there is really nothing to it. You know, Ty, I talked to Ty about it in our podcast before. And, you know, like, it's that easy. It really is if you know what you're focusing on. Um, so when we look at takeoffs, again, we're putting everything together. We're putting our stance all together. We're putting our slam chop chop. And now we're getting in the cage. We're doing everything that we've done. But now we're getting a direction. Okay. And, and, and the teaching points don't stop. Okay, so now we're working takeoffs in the cage. All right. And we want to look at our teaching points. Okay. So again, as we slam chop chop with that inside foot coming out of our stance, when we hit, a, when we hit our angle of departure, we've got to know where we're going. So when we watch video, we're going to start really emphasizing on takeoffs how well those guys are opening their hips, how well they're turning their toes to their direction, okay? Because wherever your toe's pointing, uh, just like Coach talked about in the previous session, wherever your toe's pointing is where your body's going to go, okay? And again, very elementary, okay? But the details are in the drills, all right? You know, we can look at uh, the young man on the right, okay? As he comes out of his stance, his feet get wide, okay? And then his outside foot does not open up. He does not turn that toe. And as you can see, his path, his angle of departure is not where we want it to go. When we do this drill without a cage, we want those guys running back here. Okay, because what we always talk about is if you're running flat and that running back's running here, four or five is going to be four or nine all day. Okay, so what we got to try to do is train ourselves to run where that guy's going to be, not where he's at. Okay. So again, what are the details? What are we focusing on? We've always got ball key, okay? And what you start to see, when you, when you incorporate the cage and the drill, everything gets thrown out the window. Guys forget about their first step. Guys forget about their stance. And then they come out flat back uh, and they waddle out of their stance. They forget about the cage, you know. The key with this drill is you have got to train yourself to the point where the cage isn't there. The cage is not there. And you're going to get dingers. You're going to ding, ding. Guys are going to hit their helmets. That's fine. That's part of it. Okay. 
But what we've got to do is train ourselves to get to a point where we can do this drill without working in the cage. Okay. And again, you see guys, you see like the, the young man on the right. Okay. Easy teaching point. When we go groups of two, our inside foot, our inside hands always down. When we go groups of four, our inside foot, our inside hands always down. Okay. So this side would be on a left call. This side would be on a right call if we're talking about a four down look. All right. Again, this is a lot of, uh, you know, single gap defense stuff. All right. But a lot of the stuff, it uh, can be married into your, your three down uh, slant stuff. Because again, when we work our three down slant stuff, we're going to have more of a, a square stance. You know, we're not going to have as much of a stagger with our three down look because we want to gain ground on that first step. You know, if you keep your feet staggered, when you move to a, a slant or a movement type defense, there's always an opportunity where you're stepping with that staggered foot. You haven't gained any ground when you take that first step and that offensive lineman's already gained six inches on you. Okay, so that's one of the reasons that we're going to try to kind of clean up our stagger. Now, from an athletic standpoint, if guys can keep their stagger and they can keep it, you know, then great. Let's keep it as, as mirrored as possible. Okay, but, you know, if you got guys that are deficient, in regards to having a staggered stance versus square foot stance, then you've got to really start thinking outside the box on how to train them. You know, one thing that we think about uh, when we talk about our single gap when we're shaded, you know, is that slam step. Okay. The one thing that we change when we're head up and we're working like a four technique and we're slant to the gap is now we're thinking about that zero weight. Let's get our, Let's, if we're slant to the left, let's make sure we understand that we are pushing off that right foot when the ball snapped. Okay. So again, what are the details and what's the emphasis? All right. If the, if, if the guys get a three down call, then they know, Hey, I got to push off. I got to get vertical with that step. If they know they get a four down call, then they're half man shade, you know, covered foot shade. And we are attacking the man that we are over. Okay. So again, the details in the drills and how we work it, all right? Next one is our bull to pull. I'm sorry, our pull to bull. Uh, this is one, you know, when we did it at Houston, uh, we worked it out of a four eye. Um, so again, when you're looking at the drill, you're basically looking at a four eye. He's gonna take that, that shade step, okay? And this guy's leaving or he's pulling. And then we've got to slam that, that first slam step and we've got to redirect. Um, you know, if you're a, uh, you know, if you're a two eye on the inside shade of a guard and that guard pulls, you take that slam step to his inside shoulder and you've got to snap back on that center. Okay. Those are the examples of how we're going to work this drill. But again, nothing changes. We're still trying to slam that first step. We see pull. We got to go to a bull right now. Okay. We see pull. We got to go to a bull. All right. Now, what you're going to see again, the emphasis is you have got to still take that slam step like this guy is coming to attack you. You know, it, it, I think when you talk about coaching four eyes, it's in the same book as coaching a seven technique. That guy's got to be a bad dude. He has got to be a dude in regard to his steps, his reaction and how well he can get knocked back and anchor. OK, um, so when we look at this. We still want to keep everything aligned with the drill. Now, think about the focus. We're talking about slam. Okay, we're going to take that slam step, and then we're going to hit that back to the, to the bull. All right? How are we attacking the bull? This drill right here, our emphasis right now, was really working that short slam step towards our shade and then fighting back. So you can see these, some of these guys are soft on this. Okay, so when we go back and watch the video, we're going to talk about our attack points there. You know, some of the details that we have to work on. Um, guys, you know, D-line guys, they always ask, you know, coach, do you stay on the backside or do you, you know, slam it, hit the center and then cross face? I think a lot of that has to do with your scheme. You know, if you've got a backside linebacker that is your slow play scan guy, backside cut back boot reverse, then your nose guard can get over the top. You know, if your backside linebacker is playing fast, fast flow, then you got to have that nose guard's got to stay back. He has to. 
Okay. So again, what are your rules and how do your rules play in to the strengths of your personnel? All right. So, you know, this is our slam. We're taking our slam step and we're just trying to get back on. Okay. We're getting that pull and we're going to a bull. Hey coach, right. we got, we got about two, three minutes here. All right. One hand stab. I'll be quick with it. Okay. Uh, there's two couple drills on the one hand stab. Very easy stuff. Non-contact stuff. We're going to put our inside foot back. Like we have already initiated a one hand stab. We're going to try to lean hard into our pole. We're going to keep that arm long. We're going to drive that inside knee vertical. We're not going to try to cross over with our steps. We're going to reach with that off hand. Okay. And the one cool thing that I like about this drill is that the guys, they really get excited about a hard lean. You know, this was one of the days where we were just introducing it, but you'll see guys really trying to get their feet outside the pole and getting that hard lean to understand what it is to set that one hand and how we've got to, um, you know, continue our foot fire. And then with our offhand, try to, you know, get in the passing lane. So again, we want to drive that. As you can see from a teaching standpoint, this young man's inside foot went all the way outside. You know, we don't want to cross over. We want to gain ground. We want to turn that inside toe on the circle. That's Ben. Okay. So you see guys and you see what they're trying to do. You see guys lean. You see big boy here, no long arm. No long arm, okay? And guys never want to lean on that pole, okay? The next variation of our one hand is we'll take a two man and we'll put the pins all the way up to hole number two. So that thing's about a six inch punch. We'll put our covered foot back and we'll just get an idea of stepping and punching with that one hand. Step and punch, step and punch, okay? So what you see is getting a, a feel for anything that we do with our hands, we've got to do with our feet. OK, and guys mess it up. You know what we want to see is a short when that foot hits the ground, we want that hand locked out. That's our emphasis. OK, now when we graduate from this drill of just stepping and punching with a one hand, now we'll break it down and we'll go to the next deal and we'll step with a one hand and then we'll get off it on a whistle. Step with the one hand. Lock out, club the outside shoulder, rip through. OK, so what are we doing? We're breaking down the drill into itemized movements and we're trying to do little things to put it all together. OK. Working the double team. Sorry, coach. You got me fired up. Working the double team again, slam, chop, chop. After we hit this double, we are never going to put our knee to the ground in a football game. But one thing this drill does is it activates the hips. Kids get an understanding of how to turn those hips when they play that double team. When we post with that outside hand, that's our strong arm. So as we work through the double team, we can get a hold of that guy and we can shuck him by as we're getting hip to hip skinny in the gap, okay? So there are a bunch of things that we can emphasize in this drill that carry over into the next drill, all right? This is a two point stance drill. Again, coming out of the hips, Extension, and what you're going to see Ed do here is I want to see that left arm, strong arm, and control that guy, okay? I'm standing there because I don't want to be touched. Their, their emphasis is stay hip to hip. Don't stick your butt out because the next guy is going to, he's, going, he's aiming for your hip, okay? So as we work this drill, we want to gain ground, shimmy, 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 strong arm and by, and we've split the double team. There is no such thing as a double team if you knock your initial shade off, okay? And that's one thing that we try to work on. Now, are we stepping with the covered foot? No. Are we doing some of the things that we talked about earlier? No. But are we trying to get hip to hip on the man? Are we trying to strong arm with that outside gap hand? Yes. So what's the focus, okay? Again, I go back, you know, you can sit there and you can talk about technique all day you can be a master of all of it but if your kids can't play and they can't learn what you're talking about it doesn't matter all right so you know um i know I, 
I got a little overwinded on some of the drills. I'm excited. I've been, I've had about 12 cups of coffee, so I'm ready to roll. Um, you know, I appreciate you, Pat. I appreciate you, Todd. 